project. And I question, do we, is it time to start thinking about our, our move, our next moves? I mean, in chess, it's called a gambit, where you're willing to sacrifice a piece, one of your own pieces, to go after something else, something of more value to you. And I wonder if, if, if we should be thinking a little differently, because right now a lockdown just sacrifices everything in its past. I mean, we lose our economy, our jobs, our mental health, our, our ability to get cancer treatments. I mean, the, what, our, our, the debt we're taking on in future generations, it's an ultimate sacrifice. And I'm wondering if maybe the strategies, should we be looking at how do we protect our, you know, I call it the kings and queens, the elderly, who are by, by far are the vast majority of people that die from COVID. Should we be doing, should we be just focusing on how do we protect them? and still keep elements of our economy open? Should we be thinking about different moves? And yet, I, when I look at our politicians, it's, it's, it's all or nothing. And, and what makes me more frightened is, and because they have this new power, we're not keeping them in check. We don't know where the money's being spent. We don't know where it's going. So all of this stuff just says to me that maybe it's time we, we, we look at other ways to protect lives and at the same time uh, protect uh, um, everybody else that's uh, that's affected by uh, by COVID. Well, and I asked the question yesterday on, on the show and on Twitter just whether or not it was time, given what you're saying, is to have this sort of le consistent approach coast to coast uh, because from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, we're getting different answers. I understand that there are hot spots and there are parts of the country where there are few, if any, cases. So we would take that into account. But we need sort of one strategy on this to be able to look at it. Do we need the Emergency Measures Act? One. And most of the people who respond to me thought, yeah. And I think, Tony, not necessarily because they were looking at it from a political perspective, but because they were frustrated with the message that goes with it. Just had the mayor on, and the mayor is saying, stay home. Unless it's something incredibly essential, stay home. But at the same time, we're leaving malls open in red zones. So that's a huge contradiction in the message. Stay home, except if you want to go to the mall. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. I, 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 I agree, and we can put a tent in front of a restaurant that's been closed, but we can't invite them in our restaurant. You know, and people just started going, what? Who's running it? And I listened. I looked, I love John Tory, but he goes, wow, we found $500 million in savings. Why did it take a pandemic to find those savings? Or the other question I would ask is, how? you know, you talk about savings. How many people working in government have taken a pay cut or felt that they're sacrificing the way that when you make these lockdowns, so many others are completely sacrificing you know and i think we've got to just so it's not only the inconsistency it's leveling the playing field because if, if i'm working in the public service right now again my job might be impacted the way i do it i might be working remotely but do i feel the pain that some of my decisions are are are, 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 are uh, you know relating to it i mean these restaurants that are going out of business these family savings that are that are, that, that are completely collapsing the mental health the the Side rates. These are the things that we've all got to be factoring into it, and that's why I go. Uh, I, I'd love a national strategy, and I'd love some honesty. And I would, and from that, I think we would all feel a little bit better that but we're willing to do our part. And the last thing I said, David, I, I, we know it's an airborne virus. Why aren't we putting out, making sure that every citizen has the right masks when they do leave their home? Because I think locking ourselves in our house. Is not uh, is a lockdown, but I don't think it's necessarily going to get us to where we need to go. Well, the other side of this is, is, is more of the, and you suggest in terms of strategy and how we're going to move the pieces around back on the chessboard here, using that metaphor. If we know where the hot spots in the hot spots are. We know that there are neighborhoods and communities where there is more COVID-19 than in other parts of Toronto, for example. Uh, so, where is the initiative that says? We're going to move clinics into those communities. We're going to do mandatory testing to make sure we can catch this. And then we're going to have the facilities and the operate, uh, operational support for those who have to isolate. So let's say, you know, it's, it's one individual uh, who lives with four other people in a three-bedroom apartment. You can't self-isolate easily there. We need to set them up with the facilities to do that. Where is that? I mean, it, 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 that would go a long way with China. technology. What's the tracing? Why haven't we? Why? Why have we suddenly abandoned tracing? As, you know, it's it, it, it's just again, it's strategies. I'm not saying a politician's job's easy, but I would tell you right now, when I hear this sort of uh, these these speeches, almost like the uh, the end of the world's coming, it's almost like you're trying to stop believing. And we stop believing. We stop. 
responding. And I think that we just got to be, just got to take some of the froth off and the emotion off and, you know, and really get back to some really pragmatic steps to say we can bring this under control, but at the same time, we can control our future. And I know people are going to be texting and going, you don't care about lives. I'm not saying that. Protect the vulnerable. The vast majority of people that have died are at 80 plus. So really do our part to invest in protecting that. And also understand that the rest of the world, we have to keep moving because if, if we just shut ourselves in there, inside our house, I think the consequences in terms of our mental health, our economic health, are going to be, uh, by the time we get a vaccine, there's going to be very little left. Well, and, you know, on, on that point, I just don't think people, I think people are willing to do difficult things to make sure that this is handled properly. But the, 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 the framework and the purpose behind it, I think, has to be obvious. And that's where we mount that uh, momentum to get uh, out in front of this. Because right now, Tony, we're, we're chasing the coronavirus. So, listen, it's always good to have you on the show. And we appreciate you getting up on a Sunday morning and doing that. Uh, Dave, I would get up to listen to you on a Sunday morning, so I'm happy to join you. Tony Chapman from Tony Chapman Reactions. And uh, listen to the show Friday at 